Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video we're going to take a look at the Blender 3D viewport. If you're using Blender to do 3D modeling, this is the viewport where you're going to spend the bulk of your time. So it's good to know what all of the different buttons and icons and menus do. I want to do a quick overview of them here today. We're not going to go deep into them, but I at least want you to know what each of them is for. In addition, it's also good to know how to navigate the 3D viewport. Here I've got a default Blender scene with a cube, a light, and a camera. To make this a little larger, I'm going to go ahead and go into full screen mode on this viewport, which is hitting control space. This gets rid of everything else in our Blender interface so that we can really focus on just the 3D viewport. In addition, I'm going to make the interface just a little larger for the video's sake. You don't have to do this step. If this is your absolute first time using Blender and you have no idea of how to start, the first thing you'll want to know is how to select an object on the screen. We do this by left clicking an object. If we left click and drag, we can also box select multiple objects. By clicking off of any objects, we can deselect. If we want to pick objects, and add them to our selection, we can simply shift-click objects. One concept to get early is the idea of the active selection. Here I have three objects selected, the camera, the light, and the cube. But you'll notice that the cube has a lighter selection box around it. That means that the cube is currently the active selection, whereas the other two are just selected. There are places in Blender where the active selection will make a difference, in others not so much. If you have multiple items selected, shift clicking on one of them will make it the active selection. Shift clicking the active selection will deselect it, and then shift clicking it again will re-add it. To get around your view, the middle mouse button is your best friend. Click dragging your middle mouse button will allow you to rotate your view. Shift middle mouse dragging will let you pan your view side to side and up and down while keeping the same rotation. Control middle mouse dragging will allow you to zoom in and out. Like most programs, right clicking will open a context sensitive menu. The results of mouse actions are listed at, in your status bar at the bottom of the screen. So you'll notice here Left click is select, left click drag is box select, middle click is rotate, right click is the object context menu. If I hold down the shift key while in the viewport, you'll see that these will change depending on which key modifier I'm holding down. Another way to navigate the screen is using the gizmos in the top right corner here. This axis will let you rotate your view. By click dragging on this magnifying glass, you can zoom. The hand will let you pan the view. Clicking the camera icon will take you into camera view. Clicking it again will take you out of camera view. And then this grid will change you in from perspective view to orthographic view. When you're in perspective view, objects will look larger the closer they are to you and smaller the further away. Whereas in orthographic view, there's no perspective, and objects will appear the same size no matter how far away they are. There are several sections of settings right above these gizmos. The first one is your viewport shading controls. Viewport shading consists of four modes with a drop-down of options for each mode. Wireframe mode is just that. It will show you just the wireframes of the objects in your scene. Solid mode will show your objects but filled in. Material preview mode will show you your objects with their textures. And finally rendered mode will show you your scene rendered using whatever selected render engine your system is currently set up with. The default Blender scene uses the Eevee rendering engine. You can also switch this to use the Cycles ray tracing engine if you'd like as well. Dropping out of full screen mode for a moment, if I go over to my properties window here and click on the render properties, 
I can change the render engine from EV to cycles. And now if I click on rendered, it will render using the cycles engine. If this is on EV, rendered mode will use the EV rendering engine instead. Typically, I will leave my render engine set on cycles. If you would like to tweak any of these modes, with that mode selected, click the drop down arrow and you can change multiple settings for each mode. Next to the shading options is the X-ray button. The wireframe and solid modes can also take advantage of X-ray. By default, solid mode has X-ray off, but you can turn it on to see through the objects to what's behind them while still having solid shading. By default, wireframe mode has X-ray turned on so that you can see through the objects and their wireframes. However, you can turn this off. Typically, I'll just use the defaults of on for solid and off for wireframe. The next option is for overlays. Overlays are all of the things that are drawn on top of your scene. You can toggle all overlays on and off by clicking on this icon, and you'll notice that all of them go away. Things like cameras and grids and all non-rendered objects disappear. If you'd like to selectively turn on and off items, click the overlays button and you can turn them on and off at will. So if you don't like the grid floor, you can turn it off. If you'd like extra statistics put up in the top left hand corner, you can do that as well. Next to overlays is the gizmo option. You can toggle all gizmos on and off with this one button, or you can selectively change your gizmo displays. Some people find that these navigation tools in the corner take up too much space, so they can turn them off by turning off the navigate gizmo. Other than turning off the navigate gizmo, I rarely change any of the gizmo settings, unless I want to turn them all on and off. Next to the gizmo settings, are the visibility settings. Here, for each type of object in Blender, we can turn off its visibility or its selectability. First, we have our viewport type. Every viewport has one of these so that you can switch this from the current viewport type to something else. So we'll just leave this at 3D viewport. Next is an indication of what your current tool is. In this case, when I left click, I get a box select. Next to that, you will have specific tool options. In this case, showing the different modes that my selection can take. This will change depending on what type of tool I've selected. In the center of the top bar, I have my orientation, rotation, and snapping tools. These control how objects move in space when I work with them. Here's an example. Here is a cube that I've enabled its access to be shown so we can get a better idea of what's going on. Currently, my cube is lined up with the global axis. So if I change to my move tool, you'll see that my move operation aligns with the XYZ of the Blender world. If I go into side view and I rotate this, you'll notice that the movement is still aligned with the global coordinates even though the object is shifted. I can change my transform orientation to local, and so now this is lined up with the object rather than the world. Each one of these options will let you move your object in a different way. For instance, if I have my view tilted this way, not lined up with anything, I can change my orientation to view, and now my X, Y, and Z of my view are lined up with me rather than the object or with the Blender world. Next we have our transform pivot point. By default, median point is used for our transform pivot point. Let me show you what this means. Say I have two objects selected and I rotate them. They'll be rotated around the center point between the two objects, the median point. However, if I change this to say active element, the cube that is active will now become the point of rotation. I can also set my 3D cursor, which is this crosshairs, by either changing my tool to the cursor tool and clicking, 
or when I'm in my select box tool, I can shift right click to set the 3D cursor. Now if I change my pivot point to 3D cursor, they'll rotate around that point instead. Next to pivot point are our snapping tools. When we move objects, they have a very freeform way of moving. Holding down shift will put us into precision mode so they move more slowly. And holding down control will snap to my grid units. However, there are more options available. Now, I'm going to add a sphere to this scene and say I want to snap this to one of these corners. If I turn on my snapping, make sure I'm on vertex, and I want to snap the center of this object, when I grab this object and move it, as soon as I come into proximity of one of the corners, it will snap to it, and I can click. And now when I zoom in, you'll see that I'm snapped exactly to the corner of this object. And if I duplicate this, next is proportional editing. In proportional editing mode, moving one object or rotating it can affect the objects around it. If I select this center cube and move it without proportional editing on, it's the only object that moves. However, if I turn on proportional editing and grab this object, pressing G, you'll see that a circle appears around the object, and anything within that circle is then affected by my movement. You can change the falloff of this effect using this side menu. Each one of these will give you a different effect. To change the size of the circle of influence, while you have a tool active, roll your mouse wheel up and down, and that will change the circle size. Proportional editing also works in edit mode. So in this case, these vertices can be proportionally edited here. To the far right, you'll have some additional to the far right, you'll have some additional mode-based options, such as if your transform only affects the origins, locations, or parents of your current object or not. These are pretty special options that you won't really use that much, but when you do need them, they're invaluable. Coming back over to the left, this next dropdown is your current mode. The most basic mode is object mode. This is where you deal with objects as a whole. We'll look at the different Blender object types in another video. The other modes include edit mode, sculpt mode, vertex, weight, and texture paint modes. Next to your mode selection, you have menus with your view, selection, adding new objects, and then specific actions to do on objects. Finally, most Blender viewports have two tool shelves, one on the left and one on the right. The tool shelf on the left is open and closed using the T key. Your tool shelf contains icons for your most used tools in the current mode that you're in. The right hand tool shelf is open and closed using the N key. The right hand tool shelf contains several tabs of information on your items, your viewport, it may also contain other functionality provided by Blender plugins. From the N key item tab, you can set the location, rotation, and scale of your currently selected object. You can see information about the currently selected tool, much like the top bar here. You can also change settings of your viewport, such as the viewport's focal length, which will change the amount of perspective, the clip start and end, which will say how close items can be before you start to see them, and how far away they go before they start disappearing. In this case, any object closer than 10 millimeters won't be able to be seen, and any object past a million millimeters will not be seen. From here, you can also control the exact location and rotation of the 3D cursor. You can close the right-hand tool shelf by pressing N again, and you can reopen it by dragging out this little arrow icon to the right, or by dragging it all the way over. I hope this overview of the 3D viewport has been helpful. If you have any questions or if there's something I missed, please make a comment below. If you like this video, please click the like button. Also hit the subscribe button for updates when future videos come out.
Thanks for watching and happy blending.